Welcome to so, uh, how are you? Unconventional. How are you doing? What? Come here often. What? what are you doing? Uh, flirting, obviously. <sighs> so we're here at Reading Comic Con. I'm Francesca. And I'm Kieran. And let's see what's coming up on the show. Can't wait to see what else is coming up. Big thanks, as always, to our sponsors, Epic Props, for letting us be here today. So for all your ghost-busting needs, epicprops.co.uk. And while you're at it, check out our social media so you never miss an update. Right, it's time to get started. Come on then, Giz. Finally, we can be alone. God, I'm here. Jennifer Stout, but you might know her as Rebel from Gladiators. Do you feel the power of, of the, the Gladiators? <laughs> Good <so> afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> now, you told me this is your first ever con that you've been uh, to. Yeah, my first one, and one I can say is literally blown away. I mean, I am absolutely gobsmacked just at how incredible that this actual fair is and just the diversity of everybody and what it is that they like and it's yeah it's, it's it has been very interesting and you've had quite a journey because before you were a gladiator and I'm quite fangirling because you're my first Olympian that I've oh, ever interviewed Olympian, yeah yes yeah so how did you make that transition how was it being an Olympian and then turning into a gladiator well I'm, I was two Olympic games I went one in 1998 and sorry 1988 and 1992 and I got a bronze medal uh, in the four by four but um, I was injured when I was 27 years old um, it was a little bit of a a heartbreak for me because track and field was my thing um, and then I was introduced to um, Gladiators uh, by um, Sharon Davis and um, I was like no I'm not gonna be a gladiator I'm a serious athlete I don't jump around in lycra but it happened to be one of the most incredible things I've ever done I, I've, I, I actually absolutely loved the program and it's just been and you know and you can see by personalities we, we all got on really well as a family it, all of you here today look like you get on really well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I haven't seen any of these cats for like maybe 15 years, but we've literally slotted in like we just met each other yesterday. Oh, Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So what was your favourite event taking part in the Gladiators? Well, my favourite event was, because I'm quite an agile individual, so I loved Powerball. Yeah. I loved Pendulum. And I absolutely adored the wall. Yeah. yeah. So that were really great. Oh, wow. Which would you say was your strongest event? I think my strongest event was probably the Powerball. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the agility and because of the, the quickness and taking that down the, the actual contendant, I think that was one of my best ones. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been amazing speaking to you today. No, thank you so much. No problem. Enjoy Can we just do our song one more time? Okay. You start. Do you feel the power of the gladiators? <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the song. <laughs> I'm here with Shelley Blonde, That's the me. original voice actress of Lara Croft. So, Shelley, uh, how are you enjoying Reading Comic Con? I am loving Reading Comic Con. It's lovely to meet everyone, meet all the fans of Lara Croft, but of course to see all the other all the other characters, people dressed up doing all the cosplay, um, and hearing their stories. You know, I, I, I understand I'm this fascinated. is one of your first conventions. This is my third. Your third. Um, I did uh, Wales Comic Con a year and a half ago, St Albans a few months ago, and today Reading. And it's been Fantastic. great fun, really good fun. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Thank you. Uh, so, let's talk about Lara. Okay. So, what do you want to know? 
first of all, I'd like to know, when, when you first started working on the character, did mm -hmm. you have any kind of an inkling of how popular, how iconic this character was going to be? No, we had no clue. Um, even Eidos and Core Design had no clue at all. They'd only done, apparently, they'd only done um, children's games before. And they said to me, uh, we don't know how well we're going to do, so we're just on children's games, we'll see how we go. And it blew up. It, I mean, they couldn't believe it, you know, worldwide phenomenon. And um, we were all shocked seeing her, seeing her face on the front cover of magazines and, and uh, everywhere. So was there a big difference coming in to start recording on Tomb Raider 2 to how it was for one? I, I didn't do Tomb Raider 2. I was asked to do it, but by then I was contracted to something else. Oh, so right. they got Judith Gibbons uh, to, to do Lara for the second game, but they took my, all my sound bites from the first game, with my approval, obviously, um, uh, for 2 and 3. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, obviously voice acting for video games these days, it's, it's this whole big thing. You've got to do the motion capture as yeah. well for it. They tend to model the characters on you. Yeah. How was it back in the 90s? It was so simple. It, there's, there's, I've done mocap for different uh, TV series, but for Tomb Raider, it was literally going into a studio, reading my lines, uh, them telling me, okay, uh, now pretend you're falling down a cliff, now pretend you're being punched in the stomach, you know, being directed, doing the line, and then saying, okay, let's move on to the next bit. It was, it, I think, although it's vocally um, exhausting, going into a studio for five hours and doing all the screams, I think now, now it's even more so, because you've got the mocap, you've got to do all the moves with it, and you've got to be bigger than you normally would. You know, instead of throwing, you've got to throw. You know, and I think it's far more exhausting uh, doing a video game now. I was in the lazy days, you know. So, did you actually get to work with any of the other actors that no. were involved? I didn't see anybody. I, it was just me, little old me, my cup of tea in the booth, and uh, headphones on. Did it. That was it. I, I, I only met Nathan McCree. Nathan McCree was the writer of all the Tomb Raider music for the first three games. And uh, he was one of the directors. And I think he was the only person I met involved with the game. But characters, nobody. Nobody else. And what went into the, uh, the sort of development of the character when uh, you first arrived? That was also very simple. They sent me a rough sketch. When I auditioned for the role, they just had a very rough outline of her. But in the, in the booth when I, when I was, w was recording it, um, Again, it was a picture like this, not with my face, obviously, just that, um, so I could get a feel for the character. Um, that was really basically it. They would say to me, they said to me, we want her to be devoid of emotion, devoid of humour. Welcome to my home. I'll take you on a guided tour. Um, and if she could sound like a, a British version of Sean Connery Bond, that's what we'd like. You know, very monotonous, non-syllabic, very, you know. Okay. Let's do some tumbling. And every time I went a little bit overboard with emotion or possibly sexiness, because I thought, I think she's very sexy. Bring it back, bring it back. They go, no, no, take it all out. Bring it back, bring it back. So I was constantly like, that's, bringing it back. That's so weird. That's literally the opposite to what you get from most directors. I know. Like saying you're acting give too more, much. Give it more, yeah, no. No, this is bring it back, take it away. <laughs> all right, well, thank you very much for speaking thank with us. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the convention. It's been lovely talking you with too. you. You too, thank you, lovely okay. to meet you. And on to the next bit. Joining me now is Michael Wilson, known as Cobra. Good afternoon. Afternoon. <laughs> Actually, you know, there was six gladiators and five of us was called Michael. No way. That's true. So it was Who was the odd one out? Uh, Hulk. Alex. Ah. Yeah, the rest of us was called Michael. Oh, that must have been confusing. Well, Scorpio's husband was there called Michael. Then we had three cameramen called Michael. <laughs> it was useful having a pseudonym. Yes. I Mike, bet. What, me? No, <laughs> oh, me? No, in. Give him a gladiator name. So how did they come up with Cobra? That, there was an American gladiator called Cobra that only lasted for one season. Oh. So, you know, I was lucky to be there from the beginning to the end. And, uh, you know, he's like me, extremely handsome, charismatic, you know, or personality of a car park. He... Uh, but he only lasted one season. I thought I thought they just made it up or went along with it and not, but no, it was there was an American one called Cobra. Actually, there's there's a African Cobra who who's a fitness instructor in London now. And there's a Danish Cobra who's a who's a bodybuilding female. 
So it's quite androgynous. <laughs> it is indeed. Yeah. So your memories as far as gladiators, have you got one that stands out at all? Any fond memories? The very first show. Go on. Right. <laughs> I was, me and Lightning, we was taken on as reserves. They only wanted 10, but got there and, well, I was told they took me on because of my karate sh sh sugar, because of my karate stuff. Anyway, I was really cocky because there's no pressure on. Because I, I was there for about three weeks, then they said, right, we want you want to use you as a gladiator. So... Now the pressure's on, I've got to perform. Really cocky all the way through, because, again, there's no pressure. So just before they called my name to go out and do the rings, I had a brief moment where I thought, oh, my God, I've got a bikini on. Look. Oh. <laughs> Here's, the first year, I had a little... With a snakey on it. What are my mates going to think? Oh, my God. It's probably just a brief few seconds, but I nearly ran away. Oh, I did. I... Then I went out there, blagged it, smiled, you know, went out there, caught the first geezer on the rings. I thought, yeah, sack everyone else, I'll do this on my own. But it was true. I had a moment where I, sort of, I had a moment where I thought I was going to run away. I but again, no one knew what it was all about. The American show was on very late at night, and I'm wearing like a bikini. Thinking, oh my God. Now, you mentioned the rings. Now, that was a tough event because it was all upper body strength, wasn't no, it? No, it's not. It's, it's a no? technique. If you lift your body like this, yeah, the, you're using your shoulders and your biceps. But as long as you're relaxed like a monkey, okay. you use your main, momentum. And uh, like we used to have these um, gymnastic gloves with like a steel lip on it. So you could, you're hanging on, on that. Some guys, Saracen didn't need it because he's really strong. But no, if, as long as you relax, because I did have, when I first tried the rings, there was a set of rings at a park, fortunately. And I did, I got on there and I, I'm like, I'll never be able to do this. When we got to the arena to practice, I just relaxed. <laughs> you know, like a monkey. And yeah. Uh, that, was, that was it. Got, got it, got it sussed. And everyone else sort of copied my fantastic technique afterwards. What should, was, should be charging royalties. You should do. <laughs> what was your favourite event? Uh, hospitality. With the, <laughs> the wine and the booze in between shows. Um, I like Jewel and Pyramid. Yeah. They didn't put me, I did Jewel quite a few times. I didn't, I'd like to have done it a lot more. But they liked seeing our big guys. You know, like Shadow, who's 18 stone, 6'4". Hunter, who's like 6'3 or 4". They like to see them and they like to see the smashing. I used to have to duck and dive and <laughs> use my brain, what there is of it. Now, you mentioned to me before we um, started filming that you've had to have a few operations and yeah, just, yeah. you are the bionic man now. Well, I, I've got bolts in both shoulders. I've torn muscle off of that shoulder. This one, I tore all the muscles off the back. Uh, performing stunt work on a Bollywood film in Cornwall. Oh, wow. Took care of it. Yeah, I was going to... Fantastic. For a whole new career. The next film I was going to be working on was called Cobra. I thought, <laughs> I thought it's fate. Isn't it? What oh, the chance yeah. is. It was great money and curry three times a day. I mean, it's a whole old singing and dancing a Bollywood film. A high, big budget one. It probably more in, in Cornwall. <laughs> oh, well, on that note, thank you for talking you. to thank me. You and uh, enjoy the rest of the con. Thank you.
Hi guys, so I'm here with a couple of voice actors from one of my favorite video games of the last few years. Why don't you introduce yourself, guys? Hi, I'm Melisanthi Mahut, and this is... Michael Antonakos. And they played Cassandra and Alexios, respectively, obviously, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So, uh, we've talked with a few people over the last while who've done video game voice acting. Um, what was it like compared to, say, normal acting or normal voice acting? Were there any big differences? In this game in particular, it was really unique because you had another actor playing the same character, so we always had to um, practice the roles together and learn a role together and sort of mimic uh, each other's performances a bit, which is something I've never done before in a project, film, television, or animation, uh, which is also really special and unique. Yeah, I will, I will second that, and I also say that it's not, uh, other than that, other than the fact that we're both kind of essentially playing the same character with a bit of our own take on that character and whatever differences that comes with, um, it is not that different from, you know, film acting or TV acting, or you really disagree, don't you? Why are you smiling? Why are you smirking? Well, as I say, apart from like the spandex suit, the head camera that's pointed at your face and dots all over your body. Whatever, it's just another, it's like it's another costume essentially, but it's a costume that kind of turns into anything. We probably should point out for anyone who's confused that there was motion capture for this. There was you a lot of... You didn't just get into spandex to go in and record your voice. Yes. No, yeah, that would have been nice. That would have been interesting. I love doing voice work in spandex. Yes. Yeah. It's great. Brings out the best in you. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, without trying to give away too many spoilers, uh, obviously you both play the protagonist character depending on who the player chooses at the beginning of the game, but also uh, uh, one, of the, one of the Always. antagonists throughout as well. What was it like creating and developing this character that you both played as a protagonist and an antagonist? Um. Well, it was it was interesting in a way because I guess we both had to agree on the direction that we wanted to take with the character and luckily I think we agreed on pretty much everything really which is quite rare um, but we had an interesting initial guideline from the writers so they'd given us like the main the main arc and the main journey of the character so that kind of really helped us find the skeleton on which we would then kind of start building, basically is a better way I can say it. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, we, we uh, took time together to develop what we thought the characters would feel like and keep a similar essence while making them our own. Mm -hmm. That was something we wanted to make them distinctly our own, but keeping a similar essence to them that was would play throughout. And then uh, that went for the villains as well. Um, it was really neat to play the villains, uh, the antagonist character, uh, and play. That was a time we actually got to play opposite each other. The villain um, was the one that needed a bit more, I think, fighting for, or more. And you know, I think that's the one we kind of debated, debated a bit more, right? Yeah. You know, Vimos was the one that we had more of an extensive discussion about, more of a debate about. I think we agreed on pretty much yeah, we had to everything. Have a big yeah. Sit down with the, with the writers and and the team when we started doing the most. Uh, of how we saw it and I think we saw it a little differently than they had initially uh, wanted and so we had to have a big talk between them and us uh, it was neat because we came at it together as a, as a duo of like we see it this way um, rather than just one person's opinion so it was very it was just a really unique um, approach to come at something like that yeah and with so many divergent storylines did it get confusing when you first read the script we didn't really read, I mean, we didn't see all these storylines from the get-go because essentially, like I said, they just kind of give us like a vague beginning, middle and end. But everything that came in the middle of that storyline or how we branched off was not something that we knew. It's something that we kind of discovered week by week when we got the each week script. So, but because we kind of knew the main arc of the story, everything else, it, kind of made sense in a way it wasn't it didn't it wasn't confusing basically is what I want to say so it was easy to follow because when you just the main bit yeah and you got familiar over time because it would start a certain way and we kind of get into the character and this went on for a year and a half like of recording um, so after about six months seven months eight months then you started getting an idea of who they were uh, because we just started jumped in and developed the character as we were going 
it was uh, it, it was a unique process that way. So it was it was very fast in the beginning, and then you kind of figured it out as you went and saw where they were taking the stories. And yeah, like she said, we, we would get you know a few hundred page scripts on a Friday and start on Monday, so we get like very little time to work on it, and you would just figure them out as you go. And over time, we became really, really comfortable with the characters and could kind of see who they were. Yeah. yeah. Okay, final question. And I think this is a bit of a tough one, but you might already have an answer in mind. If you could choose any place and period in history for the next Assassin's Creed game, where would it be? Oh, wow. Uh, That's a good one. It's a good one, yeah. I've stumped them. Japan. I want ninjas. I'm thinking Japan, yeah, but I don't know. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't know what time period to say. There are a lot of people who want feudal Japan. Yeah. So, you know, samurais and, and all that. Yeah. Um, Hidden katana. Yeah, right. I just want to see them and then talk in really deep, deep Japanese, like, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that, that, was, that was wonderful. <laughs> I've, you I can tell nothing. Voice I said actor. nothing, but it sounds cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, you're the guys who can make it happen. You know the people at Ubisoft. And yeah, get it done. he can do the... Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Hired. Get it yeah. done. Get it done. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for speaking Thanks. with us, and I hope you enjoy what's left of the convention. Uh, and on to the next bit. Thanks, guys. Bye. My name's Ellie, or Weirdo Ellie Cosplay. Um, I'm a UK-based cosplayer. I go to loads of different cons, and I cosplay a range of different characters from like comics or TV programs or all sorts. Um, and I do a mixture of making and buying and a bit of both. So what got me into cosplay? Well, basically, I was not like a geeky, nerdy, all sorts. Like I didn't like superheroes, any of that, when I was younger. Um, hadn't read a comic, anything like that, until, um, I don't know what the date was, Suicide Squad, huh? which I know not a lot of people like. Something tells me a whole lot of people are about to die. But I absolutely loved it, and I loved Harley. She seems nice. And so after then, I started watching Batman, all the things, and reading the comics, and absolutely loved it. I started following some um, cosplayers on Instagram. Obviously, I'd seen like Big Bang Theory. You're right on, sister. Um, and then in 2017, I finally decided to do my first cosplay, which was Killer Frost. Um, and that was for my first ever Comic Con, um, MCM Birmingham. And I absolutely loved it. I went up to everyone, like, oh my god, I love it. <laughs> um, I started my Instagram account and really focused so much on cosplay. And I have Absolutely loved it. Who has been my favourite character to cosplay? Well, <laughs> um, I absolutely love Harley, basically, because you can just go absolutely mad with, like, you can make your own version. Like, I don't know, there's just, obviously she's got so many variants, which loads of other characters have, but she's just so fun and wacky and weird, like me. And I just love her, and I just you just get to goof around a bit, but then she's like super cute, and I don't know, she's just one of my favourites. Just love Harley. <laughs> Do you have a dream cosplay? Um, yes, I've many. 
some I've already done, like Suicide Squad was a dream, Christmas Harley was a dream cosplay, but I think um, I really want to do like a Deathstroke, female Deathstroke, not his daughter, like him, but yeah, I'm a girl. I really, 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 really want to do Princess Anna like a proper version. I've done an armoured version for a warrior Disney group, but I want to be her so bad. She's like my spirit animal. <laughs> her and Harley. Who would be my dream guest? Well, today I'm going to see James Ransom. Ransom, yeah, who plays um, Eddie in It Too. That's why this is happening. I prefer to meet guests that aren't necessarily as huge as the stars, but like I watch a lot. So this is a weird one, but I would love to meet Stephen Fry. But um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine characters, oh my god, that would be a dream. Anna Kendrick would also be amazing. She's an angel. It's crazy. So um, for me, the best part of Comic-Con is seeing my friends. So before I had my Instagram account and I didn't really have any cosplay friends, I used to go to con and just spend all my money. And yeah, it was great, but I mean, I had no money by the end of it. Now I've got Instagram and I met so many amazing friends. Con is just like, um, chance to all hang out with each other like I'll be there and I'll be like oh my god look it's blah blah and then I'll turn around and be like wait I know that person too oh my god and it's just like a big family really it's just a lovely experience to just chill and get to see each other because obviously we talk all the time on Instagram but we just all come together at Con and it's just lovely hope you enjoyed what I had to say like I said my name's Weirdo Ellie Cosplay you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, I've also got a YouTube channel. I don't even know what my channel is to be honest, but yeah, head over if you think this is something you want to see more. Thanks for the call. Joining me now is Helen O'Reilly, known as Panther from Gladiators. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, nice to see you. Now, how did you get involved with Gladiators? Um, before Gladiators came uh, around, I was uh, a champion bodybuilder. So I won the Miss Britain, Miss Europe and Miss Universe titles. And I was on a TV show called Noel's Addicts. So Noel okay, Edmonds. And yeah. it was the thought that I was addicted to fitness because I did so many fitness competitions. And the producer saw me on there and asked me to do a tryout. So that's how it all started for me. So I was obviously like the rest of them into sport. And you've actually carried that on, haven't you? You're still in the fitness game today. I'm in the fitness game because I've got a gym. It's called Panthers Gym and we're in Uxbridge near um, Heathrow Airport. I also have a comp prep business, so I'm actually helping other people to get on stage now as well. And we do everything from, you know, doing their diets, the training and the posing and helping them choose the outfits and what have you. So, yeah, it's, if you love something so much, it doesn't feel like work. So I thoroughly enjoy it. And what is your best memory from Gladiators? Um, there's so many to choose from, but I suppose we had so many opportunities to travel. Um, we had so many opportunities to meet a lot of people. So we met famous people, but I think one of the nicest things was I, I managed to go to Mauritius twice as a gladiator. So uh, we got to be away on a holiday, so to speak. Photoshoot met the Baywatch girls and guys. So that was really nice. Well, thank you for talking to me today. My absolute pleasure. And enjoy the rest of the con. Thank you. You too. Bye. Let's see what's coming up next. Hello and welcome to Between Two Helmets with Kieran Donnelly. I am here with uh, Not Ezio from Assassin's Creed and the other Not Ezio from Assassin's Creed. So... Um, Michael, you're probably known best for your role as thug number three in Arrow. Do you feel like you could have aimed a little higher with your audition, maybe gone for thug number two? Uh, I really liked the approach thug number three took to uh, the street in that scene, and thug number two actually was knocked out. 
so I was happy with number three. Okay, good, good. Um, is it true that you both only got the role because Nolan North can't do a Greek accent? Possibly. Is this news to you? It is now, yeah. It's, it's pretty common knowledge. Oh. I knew that. You did? Oh. Yeah. I mean, Nolan's the go-to. Hey. Fair enough. Right. Um, so you both played protagonists in an Assassin's Creed game, right? Yeah. Uh, in your opinion, who do you think is the best of the Assassins between Ezio in Assassin's Creed 2 and Ezio in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood? Of like all the assassins, who's the best? But only out of those two. I go for Brotherhood. Brotherhood. I mean, they're both correct answers, so. I, I, I'm sorry, I froze. I couldn't. I couldn't. That's I was, fine. I thought I was. That's fine. I, I, I played as his character anyway, so I don't care. Um, right, so they uh, they clearly they base the character designs on you guys a bit. Um, when you found out about this, were you glad that they went away from the stereotype of having good-looking protagonists? Yeah. You know, I think it's important to have a full rounded spectrum of people, and mm -hmm. you know, that's uh, it's relative, you know. It's the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so I, I guess it, you could consider, some people might consider us unattractive, and some might not. Like, like I, I mean, get, I that, get that a lot. There's that, there's that picture going around of, of Arlo from Unity, you know, where it's just the eyeballs and the teeth and stuff, and, you know, sometimes when I was playing, I was thinking, why, why can't we just go back to simpler times, just eyeballs and teeth? But I think I would win that, though. Yeah, you, you kind of would. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have that. She definitely has teeth. Definitely has yeah. teeth. Yeah. Thing going. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Oh. You want it? Yeah. My hands. Uh, now, uh, Cassandra, yeah. Cassandra seemed to get into like all of the like the big streams and and YouTubers and stuff were playing as her and and you know that was great and everything. She got a lot a lot of publicity out there and stuff. Um, were you guys like a package deal, or did they actually want you to come, Michael? Did they want me to come, or did we come as a package? Well, did they? Oh, did they invite Melisanthe, and you guys have to? Yeah, they together. saved a lot of money um, bringing us both, so she insisted that I would be there. Okay, thanks. That's, uh, that's everything I have. Thanks. Yeah. Take that, no. That was Between Two Helmets with Kieran Donnelly. Uh, these are my guests. Um, thank you. Thanks. Mean. Sorry. is James Crossley, known as Hunter from Gladiators. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you enjoying the con? I'll tell you what's been really nice is I haven't seen some of these Gladiators who are here today for 10 years. And to catch up with them, and we've had so much fun, and just you know, bringing back all the memories of, of all the Gladiators has been fantastic. And 
what also has been great is seeing the range of, of fans that have bothered to come and see us today. Obviously, we've not been on television for, for a long time. I know we've had repeats over the time on Challenge TV, Sky and whatever. But, you know, we've got little kids to grown-ups to grandpas. And we seem to have spanned several generations, <laughs> like 100 years old. So it's been, it's been so nice to a, touch base with some of my friends and also to see all the fans come down and see us. So what was it like when you first came into the Gladiators, into like the, the back room where they were all sitting around? Did you feel intimidated at all? Well, I was only 19 years old and I'd come fresh up a bodybuilding stage. I'd gone down to London, done this audition, climbing ropes, you know, pull-ups, fighting on the jewel and stuff. And I came into this room and all the Gladiators were sat there and they went, right, this is Hunter. And I was just like, Ugh. and it was very difficult the first year because I'd never done any kind of athletic style training and all the events as you know like hang tough dual powerball they're all very athletic so it was a real struggle the first year and I kind of vowed the second year to come back and I trained to be a gladiator rather than a bodybuilder and that's when I started to make big changes in my performance as well but yeah it was very intimidating because these were guys I'd watched on television Hawk over here he was my favorite I won't tell him that but he had such an incredible physique and um, you know I was watching them when I was 17 18 years old and uh, so it was, it was great to meet them all. And what have you been doing since? I've heard that you do a bit of personal training. You're keeping up really well with yeah, your fitness. Yeah, well, actually, my, 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 my main job is I'm a landlord. I've been renting houses for about 20 years. And it's not so much personal training, do I? I tend to do um, workshops in about strength and conditioning. So I go around yoga centers. I do a lot of yoga, so I do strength and conditioning for yoga. I do hypertrophy workshops and fat loss workshops. And I go, I tour around gyms. My friend's got a gym in Leeds called 1RM Leeds. So hello to everyone at 1RM. And uh, we, we do these retreats and workshops all over the world, really. And um, I still compete. I was competing in Strongman for the last eight years. I was in World's Strongest Master in May, and that was kind of my last competition. So I still keep very active through, through weights, but very different training to what I did on Gladiators. Now, you mentioned the Strongest Man. Now, am I right in sa uh, saying that you broke a record last year for yeah, Diddy research. Stones? Yeah, good I, um, I like to give myself little targets, um, you know, strength or fitness targets. And unless you've got something to train for, it's very hard to go in that gym and you just tend to maintain. So if you have that goal, it gives you the fire in your belly. And I wanted to break a world record. And the Dinny Stones is a very niche world record. And, you know, it, it was four months of my life that was every single thought of the day was the Stones. My training, my recovery, I didn't go out. I became a complete monk, but I got the world record. And it just shows you really that, that you can really do anything you want if you really put 100% into it because it was an impossible record really to beat. Mark Felix, who's been a world's strongest man about 11 times, had the record. And um, yeah, I just kind of went for it. And a lot of mental, really mentally getting into it. It's not also always about how strong you are physically. It's about how willing you are to go the extra mile mentally. And yeah, I went to a dark place, but it was, uh, yeah, it was great, great to get it. It was, it, was, it was a very emotional experience. I burst into tears as soon as I did it. Yeah, it was actually quite full on because when you put your whole being into something, at the end of it was a bit, and actually, funny enough, I, I did a talk. <laughs> I, I do talks on mental health so, uh, sometimes, and I was talking about goal setting for mental health. And it was the first time I'd spoken about the Dinny Stones since I did it, and I burst into tears talking about it. Oh. So that was a bit embarrassing, because I'm talking about <laughs> mental health and I'm blubbering around. So. But it's good to cry. Yeah, it just shows you when, when, you, when you put so, so much into something, it emotionally it, it connects with you, you know. So yeah, that was it. So back to Gladiators, how do they come up with the characters? How do they assign you with Hunter, for example, or do you get to pick yourself? No, they just, I think it was pretty much the producers and the co-producers and the directors and whatever, they just sat around a table with a bottle of port and, and just come up with names because I was originally called Trident and we, we got in this car to go to LWT to meet all the other gladiators and they said, oh, actually, we've got a Trojan and that's a bit close to Trident, so we're going to call you Hunter. So I don't think they had the names in mind. I think maybe someone like Wolf, he kind of had that wolfy look and Hawk had that kind of hawky look and Panther looks like a cat. So maybe <laughs> some of them, they had a list of names thought that will fit them. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I think Hunter was just a, a random you know, name that they liked, which I think is quite a good name. It's quite good. It different. works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for talking to me today. Yeah, thanks Enjoy very much the rest of the con. Thank you. All right. See you later. We have had an amazing time here at Reading Comic Con. And we'd like to thank again our sponsors, Epic Props, for helping us be here today. Check it out, epicprops.co.uk. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And also hit that bell icon so you never miss an upload. And we will see you next time. Hit it, B.A. Be unconventional. So long, farewell, a 
वीर से राज्य 